we just went over a multiple couple multiplication problems um, but just with adding and subtracting understanding the procedure of why the rule works will only enhance a student's success in algebra so we'll go over why is three-fourths times five-sevenths why is that fifteen twenty-eighths so we can decompose the numbers uh, three copies of one-fourth times five copies of one-seventh. Using the associative and commutative property, I can rearrange these because it doesn't matter in which order we, we write multiplication, it all equals the same. So three times five times the units, uh, unit fractions, and we get 15 times one twenty-eighth which is the same as 15 28 So all in all, we decomposed our fractions into A copies of one over B, the unit fraction. We use the commutative and associative property of multiplication to reorder the factors into whole numbers and fractions. We used multiplication of whole numbers and use operators to reduce the unit fraction into four times smaller one seventh. Which volunteer is correct? Use area models to show the volunteers who will have the most grass to mow. So Susie is mowing two different small dog play yards that are measured in feet, three and a half by four and three quarters and a three by six and a half. Doug is mowing a large dog play yard that is measured in feet, three and a half feet by 10 and a half feet. So let's start with um, Susie's small, um, small yard. So we're going to create an area model. This is ex nearly identical to the area model that we used in third and fourth grade, except we'll break them down into whole pieces and fractional pieces, and then we can multiply each separate area. So we'll start with 3 times 4 is 12. 3 copies of 3 fourths is 2 and a fourth. Half of four is two, and half times three-fourths is three-eighths. Then we can add all of our pieces, 12 plus two, plus two and a fourth, plus three and an eighth, using our rules of fractions, and we'll end up with 16 and five-eighths square feet. The other area is a three by six and a half, so our whole number pieces separated from our fractional pieces, decomposing them. So I just have two areas that we have to multiply. Three by six is 18, and three times one half, or three copies of half, is one and a half. Adding them together, 18 plus one and a half is 19 and a half. Now let's move on to Doug. Doug has a larger dog play area that is three and a half by 10 and a half. And again, we'll separate them decompose them into whole number pieces and fractional pieces. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 copies of half is 1 and a half. 10 copies of half or half of 10 is 5. And half times half is 1 fourth. Adding our pieces together, 3 plus 1 and a half plus 5 plus 1 fourth is 36 and 3 fourths square feet. Susie will mow a total of 16 and 5 eighths plus 19 and 1 half square feet for a total of 36 and 1 eighth square feet, where Doug will mow a total of 36 and 3 fourths square feet. It looks like Doug will mow a total larger, area larger than Susie. So we can multiply fractions and mixed numbers in the same way that we multiply whole numbers to solve problems. Homework, make the smallest or largest product by filling in the boxes below using the whole numbers one through nine, no more than one time each. Sketch a model to justify your results. Scan and upload your document to the smallest largest discussion board. Take a look at your classmates and see if they came up with a smaller or larger solution than yourself. Abigail has detergent and softener for laundry. How many loads of laundry can she wash with both detergent and softener? And how much will be left over? 
detergent comes in a 160 fluid ounce bottle and one laundry load is a third of a cup. Softener comes in 96 fluid ounces and each laundry load needs one sixth of a cup. We need to know how many cups of detergent that we have. There are eight fluid ounces in one cup. So 160 fluid ounces divided by eight fluid ounces is 20. So there are 20 cups in a bottle of detergent. We want to know how many one third cups are in 20. So we can use a bar model. I start at 20 because that's when it's full. There are three one third cups in a whole cup. So I need so since there are three one-third cups in a whole cup and we have 20 cups of it, we'll be able to take three loads of laundry for every one cup of laundry detergent. So she can wash 20 times three, so 60 loads of laundry. Notice we started with 20 divided by one-third and it ended up turning into 20 times three to get 60. We now need to determine how much softener we have. Again, there's eight fluid ounces in one cup. So 96 divided by eight is 12. So there are 12 cups of softener. So we need to know how many loads of softener can we do with 12 cups if each load takes a sixth of a cup. So there are six one sixth cups in each Full cup. So if we have 12 of them, we will be able to do 72 loads of laundry. So 6 cups times how many cups we have is 72. So the detergent we are able to do 60 loads and the softener we are able to do 72 loads. So she has enough to complete 60 full loads of laundry with 12 more extra washes with the softener. The meaning of division is the same with fractions as it is with whole numbers. How many one-fourth scoops of bleach are in a 12-cup container? Use a visual model to explain your answer. Pause the video, see if you can do this on your own, and we'll come back together. So I know that there are four one-fourth cups in a whole cup. So each little bar represents a fourth of a cup. Twelve divided by one-fourth is twelve times four, which equals forty-eight scoops. Based on the reports, determine how much snow each mountain had before melting. Which mountain had the most snow? Let's start with Lolo Peak. Three feet have melted. This is a fourth of what they had. So a fourth of, we're not quite sure, is three feet. Using multiplication and division relationships, we can also write this as three divided by one fourth, which we know is three times four, which is 12. I wanna know how many one fourths can fit into three. Two feet are left at Trapper Peak, all but an eighth of what they had has melted. So an eighth of what they had is two. Using our rules, two divided by one third, or how many one thirds can fit into two? I'm not sure why it says one third, it should be one eighth. It's a typo on Mrs. Richmond's part here. So two divided by one eighth is the same as two times eight because there are eight one eighths per foot, but we have two of them. So 
2 times 8 is 16. Mount Sentinel had 5 feet or is melted. Now there is 2 thirds left of what they had. That means that we have a third divided by what they had is equal to 5. So this is slightly different than the other two based on the wording, which is the same as 5 times 3, which is 15, because there are two thirds left that we need to find. And if each third is equivalent to 5 feet, we would have 15 all together. So taking a look at where the snow first started, we have 12 feet for Lolo Peak, 16 feet for Trapper Peak, and 15 for Mount Sentinel. Trapper Peak had the most snow. We can use the relationships between multiplication and division to solve problems with fractions. The relationship between multiplication and division holds with fractions as it does with whole numbers. Are these the same? Is 18 divided by 3 the same as 3 divided by 18? When I look at my first piece, I have 18 divided by 3. That means that I want to take 18 whole pieces and put it into three different groups. However, 3 divided by 18 means that I want to take three wholes and partition into 18 portions. Let's show 1 third divided by 5 using a number line. Here is our number line. I have from 0 to 1 marked off in three different pieces, so the piece that we see is the 1 third. Now we need to take 1 third and divide that into 5 pieces. We need to know how many of the cut new little pieces it takes to make a whole. I see that it takes 15 of them, therefore 1 third divided by 5 is 1 fifteenth. Let's show the reverse. 5 divided by 1 third using a number line. So here I have 5, 5 units on a number line. I want to ask how many 1 thirds are in 5 holes. So we cut each hole into thirds. I see that it takes 15 one-thirds to make five holes. So there are 15 one-thirds in five holes, therefore five divided by one-third is 15. We used our understanding of division to interpret the dividend, divisor, and quotient in the division equations. The meaning of division is the same with fractions as it is with whole numbers. For your homework, download and print the attached worksheet in the Fraction Practice Homework Dropbox. Complete the worksheets showing as much detail as possible so I fully understand your thinking process. Scan and upload your documents back into the appropriate Dropbox. Next week is our final week and we will be wrapping up with measurement and data and geometry of fifth grade.